Easy Watermelon Shirt Acrylic Painting Tutorial by Hot Pink Zebra Paper. Hi guys! In today's video, I'm going to be showing you a very quick, simple tutorial on this little watermelon shirt that I painted. So the shirt started out just this background light pink color and then I added all the watermelons on it. I made myself a really simple little kind of a stamp to do the outlines. So the actual application and design of this goes super quick. It's very easy. It's a little bit time consuming, but it's definitely worthwhile. I absolutely love this shirt. So I hope you guys like it as much as I do. And don't forget to click subscribe to see all my future videos as well. I'm going to begin by sliding a plastic bag between the two layers of the shirt so that the color doesn't bleed from the area I'm working on through to the back side. Then pin that bag in place. You can also use whatever you want. Even a couple layers of newspaper would be fine. It shouldn't bleed too much, so you just want to kind of have a little guard in there. Then I have a cardboard, a little cardboard piece that I have folded into a triangle and then taped together that I'm using as my little watermelon stamp. So I put some black paint onto one edge of it and then I'm going to use that just to place the outlines for all of my watermelon triangles. And this little piece of cardboard that I use I think is from like a cereal box or something. It's something along those lines. Cereal box, tissue box, anything will work. Just fold it and you have a nice little stamp to use and it makes it so that all of your watermelons are basically the same shape and size and it makes this outlining process so quick and so easy and the whole design then goes by in a flash. So just add all of your little outlines and then I'm going to go through with some pink fabric paint after I have my outlines all the way up to the top of the shirt and I'm going to be filling in about the top half to two thirds of my watermelon, probably closer to two thirds. So I'm just going to be filling in all of that area with this pink color. Don't make a sharp line at the bottom of it when you're fading it out. Try to kind of use little feathery strokes to blend it into the shirt color. The shirt color that I'm using is a light peachy pink. If you intend to do this on a darker color, you'd want to place some kind of a uh, a white base down. I've seen, and I don't know if this has worked, I haven't personally tried it, but where people say have cut a sponge into a triangle shape and then um, stamped it into bleach on a darker color shirt and then made these bleach stamps before they did a design like this, and that might be an option if you want to do it on a darker color shirt. But if it's a lighter color like mine, try to blend that pink paint out so that it's not such a harsh line on the bottom kind of feather it and if the whole watermelon has kind of a feathery look to it and it's not super solid as long as it's not painted streaks kind of use twirly motions with your brush that actually looks a lot more realistic as far as watermelon goes because watermelon has all those little veins going through it and all those different different sections on it so that texture coming through from the fabric actually adds some some realism to your design so don't try to get rid of that you can play it up if you'd like so just fill in. So when I was doing my shirt, I did the front and then I did like the side and half the back and then the back and half and the other side. So I did this in three zones, if you will, if that makes sense. So after you have all of your pink done, let it dry completely. So step away from it for half an hour, an hour, whatever time you have. Or if you're like me and you're working in nap times, this is a nap time. And then you come back later and you do some more. And then I'm going to be filling in the slices, the bottom third of the slices, with a very bright kind of a yellowy green color. The same thing, this is fabric paint. And if you guys are wondering, I mix my own fabric paint. The recipe is one part glycerin. This is a, a vegetable glycerin that you can find by like first aid products in Walmart or whatever store it is that you have. So uh, one part glycerin, one part water, and two parts paint. You make that little mix, you stir it up really, really well, and it's going to keep your fabric softer, so it's going to prevent the paint from creating like a crunchy feeling, and it's going to just leave the whole thing a lot more flowy and fabric-y. So that's a great mix. Otherwise, you can buy either a fabric mixative that you can get. I know Liquitex makes one. It's also, I think, possibly folk art does as well. So you can do some research if you want to just buy something that's specifically made for that. Otherwise, my glycerin water mix, I would... Uh, swear on it. It's worked for me really, really well, and I've painted several shirts. So if you want to give my method a go, that's a great way to do it. Then I'm going to take, um, before the bright green has dried, I'm going to take a darker green, same thing, fabric paint, and I'm just going to kind of line the bottom edge of each watermelon slice. So the darker green is going to bleed up into the lighter green, and it's going to make a really nice kind of watercolor effect for the rind. 
So that's what I did. If you didn't want it to have that soft look, if you want it to be a little bit sharper of a line for the rind, wait for the green to dry. Same thing, half an hour, an hour. You just feel it and decide and then come back to it. So then I'm going to take diluted, this is diluted fabric paint. So put some more water in it compared to the one, one, two ratio. And this is black and I'm going to make kind of little shadows around where my little seeds are going to be. So if you look at a watermelon and you look where the seeds are, you can kind of see like this little shadow in them. So I first added the shadow and it looks super black in the video, but it's actually much softer looking in person. It kind of smooths into the pink color and paint those down first. Then I'm going to take the full strength black fabric paint and I'm going to be adding a actual seed in the middle after I have all of these done. And I didn't let them dry necessarily. I didn't wait a whole bunch of time between the shadow and the seed. I figured by the time I got back to it, it's probably close to dry. And I was like, yeah, it's close enough. But just add, it's a little sharper black line in the middle of each of those to kind of finish those off. This whole watermelon shirt was actually not, it was really quick. It wasn't time consuming slightly. It went fast. It was a really fun project. It's one of those projects that you start working on and is just easy and goofy and you can be doing other things at the same time and just have it in the background and add a watermelon here and there when you have the time for it. So I hope you guys like this design as much as I do. If you happen to make a recreation, please tag me. I would love to see them and I will see you in my next video. Bye!